On this episode of DPV, we're going to install the Summit Racing electric fuel pump. Alright, so a while back on my first drive, I had some fuel pump woes. The holly red that was on it burned up and left me stranded. Some guys towed me home, and that was great. And uh, got in contact with Summit to see if I could try out their version of the holly micro pump. So this looks real similar. It's just an inline fuel pump that runs at 4 to 7 psi. 35 gallons per hour that should work pretty good for my application so I'm going to show you how to install this pump so let's get started all right so how do you know what type of fuel pump you should get well first off do you have fuel injection or carburetor if you got fuel injection you do not want to use the pump in this video you're gonna need one with a higher PSI um, higher pressure because you need that pressure in order to atomize the fuel through the injectors. I have a carburetor, so I need the lower PSI, which is gonna, uh, this particular pump is the four to seven PSI, which is perfect for my Holly carburetor. So next, you gotta ask, how much volume do I need from my pump? And this is where this equation comes in. All right, so your optimal gallons per hour, this is how it's calculated. So basically, it's gonna be your, Max horsepower times the BSFC. BSFC stands for Brake Specific Fuel Consumption. And that is in pounds of fuel per horsepower per hour. Basically, the BSFC is the amount of fuel you burn in one hour at wide open throttle. That's for the WOT. So typically, um, on most engines, that's going to be 0.5 pounds of fuel per horsepower at wide open throttle. Then you're going to divide that by your 6 pounds per gallon, because we want to get in gallons per hour, um, and this is measured in pounds. So we got 6 pounds of fuel in one gallon, so end result, you end up with gallons per hour. So let's see if we can do that for my Jeep. All right, so my max horsepower. According to Wikipedia, this thing, back in 1979 when it was brand new, pristine condition with the 360 and a two barrel, makes a whopping 175 horsepower. We gotta times that by the brake specific fuel consumption, which is 0.5. And that is in pounds per horsepower per hour. When you multiply that, you get 87.5 pounds per hour. Because the horsepower cancels out. Got to cancel your units, you know. Yeah, now we're going to take this and we're going to divide it by the six pounds per gallon. So, divide that by six pounds per gallon. The pounds are going to cancel out. The gallons and the hours are going to flip-flop because you're dividing by a fraction. And you end up with 14.6 gallons per hour. I'll make sure I write this out in the description below because I do write like a second grader. But uh, long story short, that Summit Pump produces 35 gallons per hour. I only need 14.6 gallons per hour, so this can be more than sufficient to supply the fuel I need. So to do this for your application, just take... Your max horsepower times it by that 0.5, divide it by the 6, and you will have your gallons per hour. Alright, so this is what comes in the packaging for this fuel pump. You got your fuel pump, obviously, 
with the power wire and ground wire. You've got your mounting hardware and your pre filter. So, pretty straightforward. Um, we'll get the pre filter hooked on there, and then I'll show you how we're going to mount this thing up under the Jeep. Alright, so here's the pump that I was using in the meantime. It's the Mr. Gasket, and it's got about the same specs as the Summit pump, but it's got a little bit different mounting instructions. So, this one, it didn't seem to matter what angle the fuel pump was set at, but it did need to be lower than the fuel tank. Now, the Summit pump has special angle considerations where it needs to be set at about a 30 degree angle from the back to the front. So, that's what we're gonna do right now. All right, so like I was saying, with the Summit pump here, you want to put it at about a 30 degree angle from the inlet to the outlet. Um, and so just basically are going to use the pump as a template. I'll drill my bottom hole because I can get it from this side and then I will flip around to the other side to mark the top hole. Safety glasses. Always wear safety glasses. hook up the fuel lines. I'll try to transfer them quickly from this pump to this pump so I don't lose a bunch of fuel and get it bolted up in there. Alright, so let's go over wiring real quick. This diagram here is what I would think would be like the optimal way to wire up your fuel pump. In a minute I'll show you what the bare minimum you can get away with according to the package insert. That really sounds like a pharmacist statement there. Um, but nonetheless, here we go. We got the battery. We're going to run power to the ignition switch. Then we'll also have power that runs over to the, the starter and a fuse circuit over to your relay. On the ignition switch, when you put it to the start position, it's going to follow this pathway, bypass the oil pressure switch, go to the relay, and to your pump. Bypassing the oil pressure switch allows you to supply fuel to your carburetor before the oil pressure is built up, which will um, ensure a quick starting. In the run position, It'll follow this pathway, go through the oil pressure switch, which has to be activated by oil pressure from your engine to supply power to your pump. What this does is if you ever have a stall out situation where um, your motor dies or you um, roll over and the motor stalls out, your pump will be shut off and so you, you're not pumping fuel all over the place. It's a good safety thing to have. Also, you always want to make sure that uh, you have the circuit fused because if something were to happen to the pump, it, say it gets um, jammed up or gets hot or there's a, a short somewhere in the system, the fuse will burn up before your Jeep burns up. That's, that's the goal there because, you know, hot wires and sparks mixed with fuel equals explosions. We don't want that. Now I'll show you the bare minimum you can get away with according to the, the instructions on the pump. This wiring diagram here shows you the minimum you can get away with when you're wiring up your pump. So you got your ignition switch, go through the fuse, go to a fuel pump switch, and then to your fuel pump. You always want to bare, at bare minimum at least have a fuse. 
Because like I said before, if you have any issues with this circuit, at the fuel pump, at the switch, or whatnot, and those wires get hot and short out, you want the power to be shut off here at the fuse so you don't ignite that fuel and cause some major issues. So ignition switch, fuse, fuel pump switch, and then the fuel pump. One thing that's nice about doing it this way if you have a rig like mine that might not get driven for a couple months at a time is you can actually disconnect a line and pump the, pump the gas out if you need to because it doesn't require the oil pressure from the motor and um, you can also have it on to uh, prime a little bit if you haven't had it running in a while and the, the lines are dry you can prime up to your pump before you crank. So it gives you a few options there. All right, so the very first thing you need to do, disconnect your battery. So you wanna make sure that you don't get zapped when you're under there working. Wiring is pretty simple. We got our ground wire here that's just gonna to attach to the frame. And then the power wire that's gonna to attach to our power source. Gotta run at least a 16 gauge wire for this pump from your power source. So this wire is coming from my switch and the switch is only hot when the ignition is on. Anytime I'm hooking up wires underneath the Jeep where it, it could get wet, um, I like to use some heat shrink. So this is the marine stuff, so it's supposed to be better for the moisture environment. Um, and then I also like to use 3M Super 88. So another thing you want to do down here when you're hooking up your wires and fuel lines and whatnot, make sure you tie them up really well because you don't want them rubbing on the exhaust obviously and we don't want them uh, bouncing around in general because all that wiggling around can rub a hole in the wire or rub a hole in the, in the fuel line and so that's why it's good to make sure these things are good and secure. Plus we don't want them to get snagged on a stick or something and and get you know ripped off or disconnected so this is a little bit of a mess down here you want to draw your power off something that's powered from your ignition switch that way when the ignition is off um, your fuel pump is off so um, this was wired in previously from the previous owner but they tied into this ignition wire it is fused which is what you want because if you have an issue with your pump where it like binds up or shorts out you want the fuse to burn out and not your jeep so that's the purpose of the fuse power goes through the fuse to the switch from the switch to the pump you might have seen in my previous video where i kind of tidied up the wiring to the switch because it didn't even have any crimp on connectors or anything it was just wire that was kind of haphazardly screwed in there so cut to that clip check that crap out A few of the reviews I read stated that this pump is really loud um, and it's definitely louder than my previous um, pump, that Mr. Gasket pump, but I say the perfect remedy to that is a pair of Summit Racing race mufflers. So in conclusion, I think this pump is perfect for my application. You know, it's got the 4 to 7 PSI, which is perfect for my little Holly 2 barrel. 
pumps at 35 gallons per hour, which is perfect for most stock engines. It's got a nice high quality construction, comes with that pre-filter, um, easy wiring, comes with great instructions. If you got a stock motor, carbureted, need a f electric fuel pump, I'd try this one out. It is a little on the loud side, but that's where you can get those Summit race mufflers and drown that sound right out. So anyway, you can buy this pump on summitracing.com. I'll leave the part number down in the description below. You can also get those Summit race mufflers that sound awesome. I'll put that in the description below as well. I want to thank Summit Racing for allowing me to try out this pump. And like always, thank you for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe.